Well, good morning. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name's George, and I'm going to share a short word with you today. Um, if you guys could open up your Bibles to John 4, um, we'll start at verse 35. Uh, while you're doing that, I'll just share a little fact about myself. Um, since I was a small kid, um, I've been a farmer. Uh, we started with an orchard, and now we have a hay farm, 20 acres. Um, in fact, right now, at home, my dad is probably out on his baler, um, baling all the hay, and then after that, he'd stack it and sell it. Um, a couple things that I've learned from being a farmer is that preparation is vital. Um, if you don't plant the right seeds and fertilize and water your crop, uh, your crop's not going to be very good. Another thing is you can't stop once you start harvesting. Um, if you take too long to bale the hay, it can get too dry and spontaneously combust once it's baled, or if it gets rained on, it decreases the value a lot. Um, so those are two things to remember. And apparently, all of us are farmers because, well, you'll see, we'll read this. Um, John 4, 35 says, You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest, but I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages, and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike? Um, in this passage, Jesus was talking to his disciples and a crowd of Samaritans, which I find interesting because he is basically telling the Samaritans that they can be saved and that they can see um, other Samaritans, other even Gentiles, be saved. Um, so... This was thousands of years ago, and the, apparently the harvest was going on then. People were being saved. Um, they were making choices to spend their life and eternity with God. Um, and even today, the harvest is still going on, and we are the harvesters. We're the farmers, even if you didn't know it. Um, I was thinking about this, and really, what better time than now? to be a part of this harvest. Um, we were able today to reach more people than any time in history. Um, we have things like cell phones. Um, we have missionaries going to every country on the planet. Uh, we have airplanes that could take us to any place on the earth at any given time within hours. And we even have things like Skype where you can talk to your friends across the world. Not that I have any friends across the world, but... Um, so today I just want to kind of call you to action. Um, don't wait. Like I said, you can't slow down. You can't stop once you start harvesting. It's important that you do it now. Um, I know a lot of us, like me, are still learning how to witness, how to share the gospel. But even while we're learning, we need to be sharing the gospel and seeing people be saved. Um, the only preparation needed is to be saved. Um, all you really have to do is talk to somebody about Jesus and what he's done in your life. Um, we'll never be 100% ready, so don't wait for that moment or else you're going to die never having witnessed anybody. And don't wait too long either. You don't want to wait till somebody is on their deathbed to share the gospel with them because then they missed out on a life of, of fullness they could have had. Um, so I just want to end by saying it benefits us all. Um, don't just think of it as the person being saved. It's only benefiting them. It's no benefit to us. We get the joy of watching them um, just be transformed by God. And we get rewarded in heaven. So think of that. And next time you have the opportunity to talk about Jesus with your friends, especially your unsaved friends, do it. Thanks.